it has been a year of Taliban having taken control of Afghanistan. What really happened and what are the implications of a Taliban ruled state in Afghanistan? There are many leaders who fled the country, many who were forced to leave the country and many important leaders who decided to stay back and steer the country maybe to some semblance of sanity and stability. Former president of Afghanistan, Hamid Karzai, is one of them who decided to stay on in Kabul. I'm being joined by President uh, Hamid Karzai in this exclusive conversation that he agreed to have with India Today. Many thanks for joining us here on India Today, President Karzai. Let me begin by asking you about the year that went by. It has been one of the most tumultuous and difficult year for Afghanistan. If you had to sum it up, how would you look at the year gone by and the years that are to come, that is that are ahead of Afghanistan? Well, you put it very well. It has been a very tumultuous year for our country and our people. Uh, to sum it up, uh, I can say that we, the people of Afghanistan, are happier that there isn't a large-scale conflict, that no more the Afghan people are losing their lives on two sides of a conflict in which uh, only Afghans were losing their lives on a large scale. That fortunately is over. But Afghanistan is facing immense difficulties, uh, has been facing immense difficulties in the past one year. Uh, the loss of uh, millions of Afghans who uh, migrated abroad, our educated leaving the country, our economy in extremely difficult situation, and the loss of national reserves of the country and the institutions that collapsed, the state that effectively collapsed, that has been a tremendous loss. So the plus is that there isn't as much loss of life as there was before, but that everything else has been negative. Well, you make a very important uh, point, sir. But, uh, and we will talk about the withdrawal of United States of America, uh, America's forces from Afghanistan and the impact it has had on uh, the situation. Uh, regional security is also Afghanistan security. But when it comes to you personally, uh, your struggle, you fought uh, extremist forces when you were in power. You have been uh, a leader who wanted to take Afghanistan to a democratic setup, to a country that is stable, that is democratic, that is progressive. And now we see uh, Afghanistan take many steps back. Personally, what do you make of the situation in Afghanistan, the ruling dispensation in Afghanistan, and how they're steering the country into maybe a more regressive country than what you had well, uh, for your country? A, a happy Afghanistan is an Afghanistan where people get educated, where men and women work shoulder to shoulder for the well-being of the country where the country is uh, looking towards a better future. That can happen only when there is uh, strong unity and that unity leads to uh, uh, the expression of the will of the Afghan people through a national dialogue of the Afghan people and where then the Afghan girls go back to school, where all Afghans the Taliban and all other Afghans live together uh, in a country that is uh, uh, ruled by law and that is moving towards uh, fulfilling the aspirations of its population. That's the sort of government we need to have and that's what we are working for. The fact that uh, you speak of peace and stability and a uh, more happier Afghanistan, do you see that happen in the near future? We're looking at the Taliban administration. We'll talk about withdrawal of forces, but we're looking at the Taliban administration that came to power, uh, uh, our force, and uh, has been in power for a year. Uh, 
But in terms of winning the trust of the international community, they're a they're long way off from that mark where the international community will recognize the Taliban administration. Uh, where do you see the Taliban and are you convinced that they can actually move forward and seek recognition, international recognition? Because no country really believes that they are going to walk the talk on the agreements and the, uh, and the areas that they had promised they are going to look into, which also includes inclusiveness, inclusivity, gender parity, as also uh, do away with the discrimination against women and uh, and, and children. Well, this uh, is a this is children. a universal rule applicable to all societies and countries uh, around the world. Afghanistan cannot be an exception. Inclusivity, uh, the rights of people, uh, the rights of all women, the rights of all girls to get uh, an education, that's a universal right. And that right is also very much the right of the Afghan people. Those Taliban leaders that I uh, have met and uh, that, that uh, the chairman of the Peace Council, Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, and I have met together, uh, agree with us uh, from the very beginning of uh, uh, the arrival of the Taliban last year, uh, when I was uh, staying for um, 10, 15 days with uh, Dr. Abdullah Abdullah in his house, when, where these meetings began, until about two, three months ago, uh, where we had some, some uh, very meaningful meetings Many of the Taliban leaders agree with this, uh, with an Afghanistan that's inclusive, with an Afghanistan that has uh, uh, girls going to school, and an Afghanistan that is uh, uh, working hard towards uh, well-being and, and, and a better economy. With regard to recognition uh, by the international community, uh, it is based on two uh, fundamental uh, uh, conditions to be fulfilled. One uh, is the fulfilling of the needs of the Afghan people. Uh, the education of girls is one such issue. And then inclusivity is another such issue. Uh, to put it all, to sum it up in one word with regard to the internal, uh, um, uh, you know, ground for, for recognition, uh, is the expression of the will of the Afghan people that, that, that matters a lot within the country and outside. Once this happens inside the country, once um, uh, this is fulfilled and uh, uh, the Afghan people see that uh, the country is uh, moving in the direction that's in the interest of the people and the country, of course, automatically the uh, question of international recognition will be resolved. So one leads to the other. Right. Um, now, when it comes to American forces, you said that it is good that we do not have, that Afghanistan no longer has foreign forces on their soil. Uh, uh, but you have worked with the American forces. You worked with, when you were in government, worked with all these foreign forces, tried to keep elements, terrorist elements out of the country, and then uh, later became one of the advocates who really did not want to see foreign forces on your soil. What changed when it comes to America, when it comes to Pakistan, when it comes to NATO? What really changed President Karzai for you? Well, as you are aware, the origin of my differences with, with the United States uh, was uh, because of civilian casualties. And also the lack of clarity uh, with regard to their policy uh, in uh, fight against extremism and terrorism and the suffering that the Afghan people endured because of that. And the lack of clarity of the US policy towards Pakistan and what Pakistan was doing towards Afghanistan in terms of hurting uh, our country. That was one aspect of this. And, and, and uh, as you recall, uh, I had clarity on that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I also recognized that Afghanistan needed to be in relation with the United States of America and with the rest of the international community and with Pakistan uh, as well. Uh, uh, we, uh, to summarize this very important question for you uh, uh, and the audience, uh, ma'am, we 
compartmentalized, or I better say I compartmentalized uh, relations with the United States in, in, in two, in two uh, categories. Category one, their military presence in Afghanistan and the campaign in the name of extremism, terrorism, cost the Afghan people immensely. Uh, and uh, that policy I considered wrong. It was more against the Afghan people than it, than, uh, than it was against extremism or terrorism. The other aspect of their presence in Afghanistan was the help that they gave to Afghanistan. Uh, the United States, their allies, and the rest of the international community, India uh, including, uh, included in that, the assistance that India provided. That aspect of the international community's presence in Afghanistan, especially of the U.S., as we are now talking about the U.S., uh, is something that we, uh, that we are um, grateful about, we are thankful about. So uh, the military aspect of it, we strongly opposed, I strongly opposed. And the support of the American people to Afghanistan's education, to uh, reconstruction, to uh, economic well-being, to the society uh, being much better well off, that we, that we appreciate, that we are grateful for. Well, uh, sir, the fact that you speak of the lack of clarity and determination in fighting extremism. Now, we do know that America lost a lot of goodwill and uh, credibility after the sudden withdrawal of troops from Afghanistan that led to the crisis that we saw last year. Having said that, Zawahiri, according to the United States of America, was killed in Afghanistan in the heart of Kabul, in a house that was suspect. Uh, and and uh, what what do you make of this then? The determination that U.S. showed in ensuring that they carry on uh, looking for Al Qaeda leaders, extremists, and extremist elements, including designated terrorists, and Ayman al Zawahiri certainly was one of them. Putting in question, how was he in Kabul? Who was he being supported by? And who was he being harbored by? I guess we've been discussing this question from the very beginning in various forms. Afghanistan, the people of Afghanistan have been victims of terrorism for a long, long time. I can safely say and with certainty that the people of Afghanistan are the greatest victims of terrorism and extremism. Unfortunately, at the same time, the Afghan people are also victims of the fight against terrorism. So we have suffered both from terrorism and from the consequences of the fight against terrorism. Afghanistan, the Afghan people do not at all want any terrorist presence in, in our soil, groups or individuals. And in the same way, the Afghans don't want their sovereignty violated in the name of the fight against terrorism or extremism. As for Zawahiri and his presence in Afghanistan, the Americans launched an attack and uh, uh, said that Zawahiri was killed. Uh, the current government, the, the, the interim government, the Taliban, announced that they are not aware of his arrival or stay in Kabul and that they would investigate it. So let's wait for the result of this investigation and let's wait for the contact between the Taliban and the Americans uh, to have clarity on. But on, on a principle, and as far as the position of the Afghan people is concerned, the Afghan people are victims of extremism and terrorism. They do not want terrorism in our soil, on our soil. It has certainly come to us from abroad for a long, long time, where we are victims, and we also do not want our country uh, being attacked in the name of the fight against terrorism. Um, do you find it strange, sir, that Osama bin Laden was found in the military garrison city of Abbottabad in Pakistan, and Zawahiri has been found in Kabul at a time when Pakistan holds a huge sway over Afghanistan and the Taliban administration? What do you make of these links? And uh, well, given your experience of dealing with Pakistan, do you see any role of Pakistan in, in using Afghanistan soil or the AFPAC region to continue to harbor terrorists? Look, you have heard me 
a lot of times about Pakistan uh, and uh, uh, our feelings and grievances uh, when it comes to Pakistan and the military establishment there. Uh, the finding of Osama in Islamabad then his killing there came as no surprise to us. But ma'am, uh, let me today not concentrate so much on Pakistan or, or what they've done. You've heard me speak about that a lot. What I want to tell the Pakistani people today and, and, and uh, the audience in India today is that we wish uh, the people of Pakistan very well and we want to have the best of relationship with Pakistan. But we also expect Pakistan to um, uh, do away with the use of extremism vis-a-vis -vis Afghanistan. Uh, we rather wish Pakistan engage in a civilized relationship with Afghanistan for the good of both countries. As for the people of Pakistan, they are our brothers and we have immense respect right. for them. the fact that you have been engaging the Taliban administration, you've been engaging the civil society and people of all quarters within Afghanistan. There are many who fled Afghanistan last year. What happens to them? They continue remaining refugees across the world. Are we looking at a situation and a stage where they will find an Afghanistan that they can return to? Because at this point in time, at this juncture, that <clears throat> That's an extremely important question for Afghanistan. Uh, and, it's, and I'm glad you've asked this. One of the greatest losses of our country in the past one year has been uh, the leaving of our educated and uh, capable people uh, from our own country. The loss of this uh, educated uh, part of the Afghan population is an immense, irreparable loss. And our effort is exactly this, to have an Afghanistan where all the Afghan people can come back, where all the Afghan people can, can be uh, working in and participating in where all the Afghan people find their country to be belonging to all of us. This is our effort, and this has to succeed for the well-being of all, including for the current government. But do you see a change of mindset and a change in mindset in the Taliban administration to really make that happen? We still see persecution of minorities. Women being persecuted has become common uh, in Afghanistan. Girls not being allowed to go to school is, uh, is, is one of the greatest travesties. How do you then think that people would actually start believing in a government that came by force, is not democratically elected, and might continue remaining in power for a long, long time? Girls going back to school is a demand of the Afghan people and a fundamental need of the Afghan people, as it is the need for every other society. The return of Afghans back to their own country as the owners of this country, with all other Afghans, is equally extremely important. This country belongs to all the Afghan people. When we were in government, and the Taliban were in, 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 in military opposition to us, I called them brothers because I consider the, the Taliban to be part of the Afghan people, part of Afghan society, and we needed to have peace with them. Today, my call is on all those Afghans who have left Afghanistan for one reason or the other, that they are our brothers, and it is upon the current government, the Taliban, to make sure that those Afghans return and that they find place in their own country and respect in their own country and an environment where they can work and grow and prosper together with all the Afghan people. So the Taliban and all other Afghans belong to this country and we need to work together for a better Afghanistan that is imperative for us to be independent, strong and growing. Right. Uh, the final area that I'd like you to cover is regional uh, cooperation and global cooperation with Afghanistan. Let's begin with India. 
Now, a very important development partner of Afghanistan, India, has suffered a great loss with the withdrawal of U.S. troops, uh, with Pakistan having more control, more influence over Afghanistan. It has become a Herculean task even to get aid to reach Afghanistan. That's how difficult things have been. And in that, where do you see India play a role? How do you see India engage Afghanistan where they were uh, for the longest time opposed to the idea of a Taliban rule? <clears throat> India is a, is a great, great friend of Afghanistan. I signed the first strategic partnership with any country uh, with India, I was the first to sign for the same reason uh, that uh, we considered India to be the closest friend of the Afghan people. And India has indeed contributed immensely to the reconstruction of Afghanistan, to providing scholarships for Afghans and uh, to encouraging democratic rule and uh, a prosperous Afghanistan. Uh, and during uh, my time in office and subsequently uh, when I retired, in all of my engagements with, with um, uh, my Indian friends, I've been uh, encouraging them to uh, get in touch uh, uh, and in relationship uh, with the Taliban, that the Taliban are part of Afghanistan, part of the Afghan people, and that India should play um, uh, its extremely important role in, 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 in bridging the gaps in our country, both vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the Taliban and uh, India and Afghanistan and India. So all of us could work together uh, in this country and in friendship with India. India continues to have a role. India continues to have a role. Uh, I, I, I very, very strongly recommend uh, that India return its embassy to Afghanistan in full strength and abilities that India especially act quickly to uh, allow back Afghan students who have uh, been studying there and uh, fresh ones who want to go and study there. India is considered um, uh, a very, very close um, ally and friend and we uh, want it back and working with Afghanistan, the Afghan people. I was just come. I was just going to come to the embassy question. Now, the embassy. There are certain few uh, people who are sent to the embassy, but it's still not fully functional. Given the security scenario and India's threat assessment, it doesn't seem like a, a, a viable option right now. Is there any engagement that we'd be seeing in the, recent, in the, in the near future for India to have? It's embassy I, I, I don't share that view. I don't share that view. I, I, I think India will be secure in Afghanistan. I think the current government will do its best to, to provide it uh, security. Uh, I want the Indian embassy to return to Afghanistan and to uh, re-engage with the Afghan people um, uh, and to do all it can to help Afghanistan reach the aspirations that we have together. We also see a lot of cooperation between the Taliban administration and China. It just seems like for India at this point in time, or for many other countries, that uh, Afghanistan and the countries that it's engaging uh, could certainly be uh, of concern to India. Uh, we've seen uh, uh, the, the continued uh, clashes and uh, stress points in the AFPAC region. Uh, between Afghanistan and Pakistan. And uh, India is engaging China now to ensure that there is some sort of a, uh, of stability in Afghanistan. Where do you see the cooperation between and among these countries, particularly China being an important stakeholder in Afghanistan? Uh, where do you see the, the, the entire dynamics headed when it comes to the West being out, <coughs> China being more <coughs> in, and Pakistan <coughs> well, certainly would be used well. way? There are a few things to, to talk about here. First, we do not want Afghanistan to become uh, a place of negative competition between big powers or between, or between neighbors. Mm -hmm. We want Afghanistan to be a place of uh, cooperation uh, between our neighbors and uh, big powers. Uh, Afghanistan's relations with India are historic and go back into centuries and civilizational. Afghanistan's relations with China are as good neighbors and very friendly. Uh, 
as for the cooperation of China and India and Russia and other major powers, uh, including the United States uh, in Afghanistan and on Afghanistan, for durable peace and stability and for economic well-being of the Afghan people and for regional interaction is vitally important. That's something that I've been wishing for for a long, long time. So surely the Afghan people will welcome such a cooperation. Mm -hmm. But to come back to the Commission of India, uh, the, 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 the presence of China uh, in Afghanistan has never been an impediment to the, to the um, uh, working of India in Afghanistan, to the deep relations between Afghanistan and India, and vice versa. The presence of uh, India and the strong cooperation between us and India has not been uh, an impediment to China. Uh, Afghanistan has managed these two relations very, very well. So uh, I have no concerns there. But it wasn't an impediment when you were in power. It certainly was not an impediment even when Ghani uh, was in power. But it certainly is a concern when the Taliban is in power because of the kind of uh, relationship and the kind of support they receive from Pakistan and later from China as this, well. No, so this it is, is not a, a Taliban India, issue sir. or a Republic issue or an Hamid Karzai government issue or uh, uh, any other government issue. This is... Afghanistan, Afghanistan people and India and India people issue. And this is Afghanistan and China and Chinese people issue. So I can assure you that there will not be such concern that uh, definitely um, uh, uh, Indian mission will be safe in Afghanistan and its working will be, will be smooth in Afghanistan. Uh, I, 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 have, I have no concerns there. Right. Right. I can assure you that, that, that the Taliban will will make sure that the Indian embassy is functioning well. I've heard it from them on several occasions. Right. So my last question before I let you go, um, what are your hopes for Afghanistan? We are uh, not many people are very hopeful. I have friends who fled Afghanistan and see no hope of returning if the Taliban continue uh, in the form and the manner in which they're continuing. We've seen designated uh, uh, entities and uh, terrorists now uh, a very impo important part of the administration. Where do you see Afghanistan head from here? It's been a year. And there has been no significant change from what we thought the Taliban was. They have not changed in form. They have not changed in how they rule. And they have really certainly not changed in the promises they made about... I have system. hopes for Afghanistan. Uh, very, 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 very good hopes for Afghanistan. This country will be fine. This country will do well. Uh, I'm also um, hopeful that things will change for better in Afghanistan. Uh, definitely there is a need for, for certain changes in the policies of the current government. The issue of girls going to school is extremely important. That must change and those schools must reopen immediately. And inclusivity and so many other issues that have, that have to be addressed that we are working on. But on the whole, uh, Afghanistan is an old, old country. Uh, temporary setups or temporary um, uh, difficulties will not stop it from the long march towards a better future. The deep freezing of accounts, the financial crisis that Afghanistan is in, is only because the Taliban have not done what they ought to have done. Unless and until they move towards a more progressive regime, uh, we do not see Afghanistan being pulled out of this financial crisis, that the accounts will not be uh, uh, will not open up, that uh, IMF will not look at uh, Afghanistan, that aid will come very that is an to issue. Afghanistan. That's sir. an extreme difficulty. The, um, uh, the um, blocking of our reserves by the United States, $7 billion, or withholding of the reserves, the um, uh, lack of uh, 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 proper uh, productive uh, economic activity, lack of relationship with world uh, financial institutions. These are the issues that our country faces, and this is exactly the responsibility of any government, uh, in particular the current government, because uh, 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 that's the problem we are facing today, is to make sure that um, uh, all the right uh, things are done for Afghanistan to uh, get out of this uh, 
immense economic desperation. I agree with you on that. On that note, President Karzai, many thanks for joining us here on India Today, hoping that this hardship that the country, that your country faced for a year now, will come to an end and Afghans will see a brighter future, that the Taliban will change its ways and means and methods of governing. Welcome, ma'am. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you very much. On India Today.